Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Physics Tricks. So let's start with important formulas and points related to laws of motion and friction chapter. So see here, first point we have inertia is a measure of mass. What is inertia? Inertia is nothing but the inability of a body to change its state of rest, motion and state of direction. State of rest if you want the example it is if you are standing in a bus and bus suddenly starts, you will tend to fall backward, isn't it? Why? Because the body which is attached to the floor will be in motion, but the, your upper body will resist that motion and because of that, you will tend to fall backward. Now, what is the inertia of motion example? If you are standing in a bus which is already moving and the driver of a bus applies a brake, what will happen in this case? Now your body the, which is attached to the floor wanted to uh, be in rest, wanted to be at rest we can say uh, but your upper body is in motion and that is the reason you will tend to fall forward. Okay. Now after this we have the third and that is inertia of direction, inability of body to change the state of direction that is called as the inertia of direction, that is called as the inertia of direction so as you can see over here and what is the example if you are in a turn right if you are in a if you are in a bus and the bus takes a sudden turn you will tend to fall in the direction in the direction opposite to the turn isn't it so this is the inertia of direction we can say this is the inertia of direction we can say right so this is all about the inertia we have and uh, because of this only we can define the law of inertia and that is the newton's first law every body continues to be at rest or continues to be in motion unless and until external unbalanced force acts on that body that is the newton's first law and that is also called as the law of inertia so if f external is zero if f external is zero then we can say that then we can say that right is equal to zero then we can say that if body is at rest it will remain at rest and if body is in motion it will remain in motion so i hope all of you understood this it is really very simple it is really very simple now what is momentum momentum is a product of mass and velocity momentum is a product of mass and velocity so it is momentum p bar is equal to m into v bar so p what is momentum if you want the definition it is the quantity of motion present in the body and what is the si unit if you want si unit is always equal to kg meter per seconds or newton seconds also you can write or newton seconds also you can write so momentum is a mass times velocity but momentum is a vector quantity so momentum is always in the direction of velocity we can say what is impulse impulse is nothing but the force which is acting on a body for a shorter interval of time it's like this if this is the wall if you if i if i just punch it and just take it back right punch it and just take it back then that is called as whatever the force which is acting on this area for a shorter interval of time that is called as the impulse okay now so i bar it is represented by i bar and it is f bar into delta t which is equal to change in momentum so yes a unit of impulse is same as that of the momentum we can say but yes momentum is not impulse Mo change in momentum is impulse right area under force time graph so if you consider force and time graph force and time graph any random like this so this is the t initial and this is the t final and if you just take the area so this area will give you the change in momentum or else we can say impulse if if this change in time is very small net force on a body is given by and this is the newton second law we can say by newton second law this is the result of newton second law what is the newton second law right the rate of change of momentum is directly proportional to the external unbalanced force in the first law it is it is every body continues to be in a state of rest or in motion unless and until external force acts on it means if you didn't apply the force body will be at rest body will be in motion unless and until external force is applied if you didn't apply it will be at rest it will be in motion but if you apply the force there will be a change in momentum there must be the change in a 
momentum right now so that is the if net force if you want to do uh, define it is the change in momentum divided by change in time so m v final minus m v initial is the p final minus p initial divided by t final minus t initial this is the net force we have now the fifth formula now the th fifth point we can say for action reaction pairs three conditions are really very important now this is the newton's third law we have every action there is an equal and opposite reaction that means the law of forces newton's second law is law of momentum newton's first law is law of inertia newton's third law is law of forces right forces exist always in pairs right and if you understand this law it is very very good right so what is this law every action has an equal and opposite reaction that indicates if you if you hit someone there is a action on that body and that uh, reaction will be by this body on your hand we can say if you hit by hand so they must act the, they must act on a two different bodies this is one body this is other body so two different bodies is no problem opposite direction they must act in opposite direction right and they must have equal magnitudes these are the three conditions which are really very important now pulley formulas so these are the four types i took so this is the simple one right so uh, this is m1 which is greater than m2 then you have what is called as acceleration as m1g minus m2g divided by m1 plus m2 and uh, if you if you just apply the formula right newton's uh, second law on m1 you will get m1g minus t is equal to m1 into a m1g minus t is equal to m1 into a now put a from 1 you will get the tension t likewise here in pulley problem also you will get m1g minus m2 uh, like here no force is there that is zero m1g divided by m1 plus m2 is acceleration tension is equal to m2 into a likewise this is the third and fourth type so acceleration over here is we have to consider all the masses which are present over here so m1 plus m2 g minus m3 g divided by total mass of the system m1 plus m2 plus m3 likewise over here only m3 g you have to consider and only m1 g you have to consider so you can write m3 g minus m2 g divided by m1 plus m2 plus m3 here m3 is greater than m1 i have considered so friction formulas friction always opposes the relative motion between the two objects right it uh, it always opposes the motion it always opposes the motion is the wrong statement it always opposes the relative motion okay now so that is what the friction is static frictional force is always lesser than or equal to the limiting value of frictional force and the limiting value of frictional force we have is mu s into n over here mu s is coefficient of static friction and n is the normal reaction we have so uh, the static frictional force is always in between 0 to fl now what is the kinetic frictional force it is mu k into n what is mu k coefficient of kinetic friction what is in normal reaction so fl is greater than fk what is fl limiting value of frictional force which is always greater than or equal to the kinetic frictional force what is the angle of repose what is the angle of repose angle of repose is equal to we can say it is the angle between the resultant of resultant of normal and the maximum value of frictional force with respect to normal or with the normal we can say right so that is tan theta and that is equal to mu s we have what is angle of friction over here same thing tan alpha is equal to mu s and that mu s is coefficient of friction alpha is angle of friction block on block system so if you wanted to learn block on block system these four points are really very important firstly consider the given block as a system now, now two blocks are given so three blocks are given whatever the entire blocks you have to consider the system and find the acceleration using acceleration in the first step calculate the friction between the two blocks okay find the limiting value of frictional force between the blocks now now in the third step find out the limiting value of frictional force between the two blocks if fa is lesser than fl because see frictional force will always lies in between 0 to maximum value if uh, frictional force that we have calculated by using the acceleration is out of this boundary then can we say if it is out of this boundary then can we say this whatever we consider is wrong and if it is within the boundary whatever we consider is true that is what we uh, written over here okay so this is the first problem which we have let's consider this is the first problem and in this we have 49 newton is applied zero, this is 0 0.5 uh, mu s we have to calculate find find acceleration of 2 kg block and acceleration of 5 kg block so see here 
So see here, we have firstly find out the uh, acceleration by using, by considering these two blocks as a single system, it will be 49 Newton, the applied force divided by 7 is the total mass, we have 7 meter per second squared is the acceleration. Second step is find out the frictional force by using this acceleration, so frictional force we have is 0 0.5 sorry it is not 0 0.5 we have to consider it is the mass into acceleration we have to consider mass is 2 into acceleration is 7 so it will be 14 newton now third step is to calculate the limiting value of frictional force and limiting value of frictional force is 0 0.5 into n is 20 so which is equal to 10 newton now compare this limiting value of frictional force with the, um, the frictional force which we have calculated by using the acceleration so as fa is greater than fl that means it is out of the boundary, it is out of the boundary, boundary. so not possible, practically. Anna, are limiting volume, just a minute, uh, practically, tell me limiting value of frictional force, limiting value of frictional force means what, maximum frictional force and the frictional force which we have got by using the acceleration is greater than the maximum value of frictional force, so this is not at all allowed. So therefore, therefore, acceleration of 2 kg and acceleration of uh, 4 kg or what 5 kg are different. So separate the blocks, uh, separate the blocks. This is 2 kg block on which the maximum value that uh, frictional force can apply is 10 Newton and this is 2 kg. So what is the acceleration? Acceleration of 2 kg will be? 10 divided by 2 which is 5 meter per second squared and acceleration of 5 kg is uh, every action has equal and opposite reaction so 10 newton is acting in this direction and the 49 newton is acting in this direction so you can write acceleration of 5 kg is 49 minus 10 divided by 5 which is uh, 39 divided by 5 which is uh, approximately 7 point 8 meter per second square. So I hope this is clear. I hope this is clear. So we'll take one more question. See here, this is 10 Newton, this is 5 Newton. Always consider whatever if they gave two values of frictional force, two uh, applied force, whatever it is, you have to consider what? Firstly, consider these two blocks as a single system and find out the acceleration. Acceleration in the first step is 15 total force divided by the total mass in the system. 15 minus you have to consider this force. Now, limiting value of frictional force. 0 0.1 into this is 50 that is 5 so 15 minus 5 this is the applied force is 15 limiting value of frictional force is 5 so 15 minus 5 then and only then this will block will move divided by total mass in the system is 5 so it is 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2 meter per second squared now find out this by using this acceleration find out the limiting value of frictional force between the two blocks it is fl is equal to um, the applied force is 5 minus the frictional force is F, right, uh, which is uh, 5 minus F, which is equal to mass into acceleration, 2 into 2. So, F frictional force we have is 1 Newton. Now, this is the by acceleration. Now, third one, actual limiting value of frictional force is uh, mu s into n, 0 0.2 into n is uh, 20, which is equal to 4 Newton. This is allowed, yes. So, as F A is lesser than F L, allowed indicates whatever we have considered is correct therefore whatever we have considered is correct correct that indicates therefore acceleration of 2 kg is equal to the acceleration of 3 kg which is equal to 2 meter per second square so i hope this is clear now the next problem so see here in the 13th problem now this is the whatever that number is find maximum acceleration is right what is the maximum acceleration see in the first and second problem we have considered applied force and we have to calculate what the frictional force or the acceleration now here right what is the maximum acceleration that uh, this uh, two blocks can have so that they will move together so that they will move together 
in the first and second applied force is given but here we have to calculate that okay so how to calculate by using the limiting angular friction force what is the limiting angular friction force it is 0.4 into the normal force that is 30 which is equal to uh, 12 newton so 12 newton is a, a frictional force so so uh, 12 is equal to mass into acceleration what is mass 3 kg into acceleration is a so acceleration we have is 4 meter per second so this is the maximum acceleration that this block can have and this is the last question now you all try to solve this whatever i consider over here this is acceleration and the maximum value of force if you wanted to calculate just uh, 5 plus 2 7 into whatever the acceleration that you have calculated just try to solve this and uh, 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 and and whatever answers you get you just uh, comment in the comment box i'll try to reply to your answers as soon as possible thank you so much